It's so complicated um, breaking racism down, but the solutions to racism are not complicated at all. People make it complicated. I'm a Jamaican American. I was raised as a Christian. I'm a teacher, a coach. I am strong, I am intelligent. I am an overcomer. I am, I'm tired. So I've lived in a very white world my entire life. I had a hard time finding my fit. This kid used to look at me every day and go, black yuck, and just point at me, and point at himself and the other kids and say, why, yeah. And he said, I don't want my sister playing with you anymore because you're black. Uh, I'd be walking somewhere and, um, you know, white folks may look at me and, and look at me as, as if I'm an intimidating person. Where motives can be added is just, it's hard. Um, and in some cases, it can also be dangerous. Racism, for a lot of people, in their minds, they think it's burning crosses in yards, calling someone the N-word and wearing a white hood somewhere. It's not as overt, <laughs> very much uh, covert. So when you call it out, people think you're being sensitive. You're a good one. You're a smart one. You're articulate, um, and I am. And so you always have to question, is it by comparison to something else? When I experience racism, I feel singled out. Confusion frustration, discouragement. It doesn't feel like that person is seeing me. Exhausted. Unknown. Disappointment. Mostly rage. I just want to be seen the way that, that Jesus sees me, um, as his creation, as his uh, son, um, as one of his own. Jesus loves me and is proud of the person that I am. And, uh, yeah, that feels amazing. <laughs> Think about what it means to be made in this image is that I have intrinsic worth and value. He is the one that placed his image upon me. And because God placed his image upon me and he is the source of my value, um, then, then there, there is no removing that. We were all beautifully and wonderfully made. God's love is for all. We are all God's children, that Jesus died for all of us. He didn't discriminate when he decided to take his last breath on the cross and take the weight of the world on his shoulders. Because a certain people group don't experience this system doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It went from slavery to Jim Crow. We had civil rights. Just new Jim Crow, it just keeps changing and evolving into something else to keep oppressing people. We can talk about redlining, gentrification, mass incarceration. We can talk about, uh, I mean, just we, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. When I learned the non-watered down version of our history, and it's a kick in the face. You can't have this much tension, this much hatred, it, and it not be a spiritual thing. When the enemy sees racism, he sees his work in progress. The enemy's strategy is always to steal, kill, and to destroy. He doesn't want the kingdom of God to thrive, and, and racism, unfortunately, has been one of the ways, uh, one of the most prevalent ways uh, that he has been able to make headway in making sure that the kingdom of God does not thrive. Race has this incredible power to divide us all up. Particularly to divide the church. To infiltrate the church and do so in such a way that it has marred our witness. It has marred our reflection of our great, good, and just king. I think Jesus is grieving over racism. I think he is highly disappointed in the ways in which that that, that scheme of the enemy um, has been able to make its way into his, his bride's house. And if the church doesn't get serious about combating this as serious as they want to combat abortion and as serious as they want to combat, you know, 
infidelity and all these other sins that I can rattle off, we're lost. Satan has had his chains on the church and many Christians in regards to racism, and some of those chains are being broken. What I see that it's happening is that God has given us, the body of Christ, an opportunity to, to really like do some work. The government does not have the answers. The different people groups don't have the answers. The activist groups don't have the answers. If the Christians cannot solve this problem, it, it won't be solved. I think it's very hard to know where to go and what to do next if we have no idea where we're coming from and the problems that have been sort of uh, created in light of that history. And so I think it's gonna require some, some learning. I'm learning that uh, many of my white brothers and sisters are have a heart to listen. And that means I gotta talk, it means I need to speak. What does the kingdom of God look like? It looks like love. It looks like justice, it, it, it looks like empathy, it, it looks like unity, it looks like peace. How about we seek God on the matter? Truly pursuing these matters as Jesus would? Because Jesus wasn't passive. To be proactive and non-complicit. If we are not doing our part as Christians to dismantle and destroy the evil of racism, we are talking and not walking. If you bring the same passion and excitement that you have for Jesus Christ to tearing down racism, racist beliefs, racist actions that you see around you, this world will be undone. <laughs>